Today, I have some new pre-release hardware to talk about. It's from my friends over at Platypod. It's the Platyball on Behind the Shot. Hi, once again, welcome to Behind the Shot. I'm Steve Brazel, and this is not one of the normal podcast shows. This is gonna be only on YouTube because my friends over at Platypod sent me their uh, pre-release versions of the two different Platyball versions, the uh, Ergo and the Elite. And I wanna talk about them a little bit. We're gonna do an unboxing. I'll take them out in the field, use them for a little bit, kinda of show you how they work there as well. And then we'll come back and do a wrap up. But there's a couple of things I wanna let you know up front. First of all, I am not a big ball head user. I shoot concerts for a living. So if you're looking for something from somebody who lives with a ball head and a tripod or a monopod, that's probably not me, but I'm gonna give you my opinions on it anyway. Secondly, this is not a deep review. Right, This is pre-release hardware. It can, might change before actual release. So I'm not so much gonna try and do a, an in-depth review, love, hate type thing, as much as I am gonna just talk about my experience using it and what I think about using these pre-release versions. And last but not least, this is not sponsored. They sent these to me. To, to look at and play with and they're, they're pre-release. So if I find anything wrong with them to let them know so that they can correct those issues before actual release, but I am not being paid for this. There's no compensation for this. They don't get to preview and haven't even asked to say, hey, before you post anything, can we see it? No, that didn't happen. I can say and do anything I want on this video and I actually will. That said, many of you know, I am friends with the folks over at Platypod. Uh, Larry is a, is a friend of mine and I've, I've known him for some time now and I tend to like all the things that they do. I think the Platypod is one of the best photo accessories that I own, in fact, I've got one sitting right here, okay, that I use for things. So I just want a full disclosure there that I do know the people but this is not a sponsored video. So let's get into these a little bit. Let's start with the unboxing and then we'll take them out in the field and use them. So when you look at the two Platyball boxes, you're gonna notice they are pretty much identical with the exception of the ribbons. First of all, the Ergo is the gray one. The Elite that shows the level on the back, that's the red one. It's also a red ball head. So let's do an unboxing, but understand they're gonna be pretty similar. So I'm gonna go through them pretty quick. We will start with the Ergo. Once you remove the actual ribbon, you're left with just the box, and the box is magnetic. I kind of like that. When you open it, the first thing you're gonna notice is at the top, it does tell you to visit platypod.com. Platyball is made by the people who make one of my favorite camera accessories, which is Platypod. But then down in the middle, it does reference platyball.com. That's where you can get instructional videos. And they even told those of us that these, they sent these pre-release models to, these, these uh, test units, they told us to go watch the videos as well that Larry Becker did because when you use these, they're completely different. I mean, not completely different, but they're very different than a normal ball head. And so if you want to really hit the ground running, go check out the videos. You'll get a better idea. Then inside you see an instructional card that basically is a user manual, talks about features. On the inside, it details the features that are common to both models. And then those features or uh, items on the devices that are specific to the elite model only, which is pretty much having to do just with the level part that's on the back, the, the, the electronic level. Then on the back, you have uh, care, warranty, what's not covered, things like that. Inside, here's what you get with a Platyball Ergo. First of all, you get a nice bag. And actually, the bag is really nice. It's kind of padded. It's Velcro. Um, it's got a little you know, hanging lanyard, lanyard on it. Uh, try and put these where you can see. Let me move that. There we go. So um, it's actually a nice, you know, bag. I'm I'm impressed with what they've done with the bag. That's kind of common though to Platyball. They include bags with their Platyballs or Platypods as well. Also in here is this, and and this is going to sound simple, but I think this is smart that they did this. This is a camera plate. It's got a bubble level on it. This does not have a built-in level. And it also is Arca Swiss so that you can mount this on your camera and then you can actually even Arca Swiss this to the ball head too. And of course it's got your, your uh, quarter 20, whatever it is on the bottom. You've got a bag here that I've probably stuffed in there too far to pull out, but I'm gonna try. There we go. In this bag, you basically just have the standard thread adapter that you might need depending on the monopod or tripod that you're gonna be mounting this to. And then last but not least, you've got the actual Platyball 
itself. And a couple of things about this I want to point out right up front. First of all, when I first saw the base, this is actually the bottom, I was wondering what the holes were. This is so that you can hook a carabiner on it, hang it off of a backpack or something like that. Kind of a cool idea. But this is the, the Ergo for the Platyball. As far as controls are concerned, the two main ones are the two buttons. There's this wheel and there's this button. Okay, so let's start with getting your camera on. That's what this button and this little tab that you see here are for. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but kind of. That's just for you to pull or push with your thumb while you push this. So you'll notice right here, this is still closed. Okay, this, the, the, the ARCA clamp is closed. If you push this safety release button and turn this, you'll watch it open. Put your camera in, and then you don't need the button for this. You just turn it and listen, and it tightens down. Okay. Now notice once it's on, this top part is not turning. That's the pan head and that's this wheel. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little lock right here. That's locked this way. This way is unlocked. When you turn that that way, now your panning wheel will turn and you can get a nice smooth, depending on how you know loose you choose to go, you can get a nice smooth pan out of it as well. I'm going to lock it for now because I don't need to pan it. When you want to take your camera out, again, push the button, pull, loosen it, and then just close it again. Now let's talk about the two main controls, which are the buttons. This is loosen, and this is tighten. And you can actually see there is an unlock icon and a lock icon here. And it is not air. This is mechanical. So when you tighten it with the top one, you can feel it get tighter, and it doesn't move, right? I mean, literally, it's not going to move. When you loosen it, you can then move the ball head all you want in whatever direction you need. Okay, So that's pretty much it for the Ergo. As I mentioned before, the Platyball Elite boxing, packaging, it's all pretty much identical. Same writing, same manual, and same bag. And then you have the ball head. By the way, you also have, even though this has a built-in level, you actually get the camera plate with it too. Super smart. That way, if you don't have an Arca Swiss plate for your camera, you're ready to go. And then uh, you've got the thread adapter, but you have something else in this bag. And this is the battery. So let's get the battery in there, and then we'll start talking about the Elite a little bit. Okay, so this is the Platyball Elite. I don't know how well this is coming across the camera, but this red is absolutely gorgeous in person. I mean, wow. Uh, for the battery, this is where the battery goes, and that operates the level. So let's put that in. It's hard to see. I'm going to try and get an angle where you can. But right here is a plus symbol telling you that the positive side of the battery goes down. So again, all the same controls we talked about before. Tighten, loosen. So it's tight right now. Loose. Tight. Again, you can see the lock and unlock icons here and the lock icon for the panning head here. I can loosen it easily or tighten it for panning. And then same controls for mounting the camera. Push the button and turn, open it up, put your camera in, and then lock it. That's it. So really the difference here is this level. And you'll notice right now it's not level. It's telling me I need to go down. You can see a little arrow pointing there. And then as I turn it left to right or down, you can see the indicators tell me I'm too high, that I'm too far that way, I need to come back, bring that in. Boom, when those two arrows meet in the middle, that means I'm level that way. Now I just come up and down, and there, I'm level. Once you get it level, you just squeeze the button and you're you're done. It's it's actually really, really nice. It's I I have trouble with the one on my camera. But this is, this is pretty handy. So when I first got these in the mail, the Platyball Ergo and the Platyball Elite, I knew I wanted to get them outside and try them with different lenses, longer lenses, shorter lenses, different tripods, all of that to see how they held up. And this is Mount Rubidoux where I live. I, I actually brought Jefferson Graham up Mount Rubidoux for the Jefferson Graham photo walk series. And which by the way, go check out Jeff, he's a great guy. But I thought, it's a beautiful day in Southern California. Why don't I get outside, head up Mount Rubidoux, set up a couple of tripods, 
pull out a 16 to 35 and even a, a 150 to 600. See how these things hold up. Let's go. So that's Los Angeles way out there. But then on the other side is the Inland Valley. Okay, first things first, my wife is filming this, so Debbie, thank you very much. I appreciate your help in all of this, and we've done a couple of takes, so uh, I, I think it's a union job I may have to pay her. Secondly, thank you to the folks at Platypod slash Platyball for sending me the Ergo and the Elite. These are pre-production copies, I'll talk about that in a second, to test out, see how they work. Uh, also, I wanna just do a quick disclaimer here. I am not a landscape or nature or anything even close to that photographer. I photograph live music. So if you see any of the photos from this session, please don't judge, please be gentle. Last but not least, uh, a major disclaimer here from a product point of view. So these are pre-production copies from the people over at Platyball. And by the time these are released to the public, either to the crowd fundraising, crowdsourced fundraising uh, platforms like Kickstarter backers, or to retail, uh, they could theoretically change. I don't think they'll change in any major ways at this point. Possibility though exists. So anything that I show you here, again, pre-production, keep that in the back of your head at all points in time. Um, a couple things about these things. First of all, if you are not familiar with the Platyball, Platyball is made by the, by the folks that do Platypod. Now Platypod is one of my favorite photography type uh, accessories. It's a small plate with tons of different ways that you can mount things to it or mount it to things. I've got one in my my backpack here. By the way, I used my Mindshift gear backpack coming up here. I love that thing. I, there's a review on that on the on the channel as well. But um, as far as these are concerned, as I've been playing with them, I've kind of fallen in love with them for a number of different reasons. I have, even though I shoot live music and not landscape normally, I have a high-end ball head. I have an uh, Acrotec and, or architect, whatever it is. Um, the problem that I have with that ball head, as much as I do like it is, I have to make sure anytime I'm gonna change the angle and loosen one of the knobs, there's a number of knobs. There's a, a fine adjustment knob, a big adjustment knob, a knob for the panning head. I have to hold the camera, because when I loosen the knob, the camera's gonna fall. What I like about this one is it's all one-handed. So let's talk about getting the camera in first. This is an Arca Swiss plate and I have an Arca mount on the bottom of my camera. And on the very front here, I'm gonna turn it so that you can kind of see it. There is a safety button here. I'll do some close-ups on this later. So we're just gonna leave the camera wide mainly for now. And I'll show you this later if it doesn't come out in the video, but this is the safety switch right here. And if you hold that safety switch down, there's a thumb knob on the back and you can turn this plate and that closes the clamp. So if I put my camera in and listen, you can probably hear it click. And at that point, it's completely safe and nice and tight and movable. Now notice one handed here, make sure it's tight on the tripod. I can move this thing around wherever I want and let it sit. There are only two controls. Bottom button loosens it, top button tightens it. Right now it's loose, right? If I just squeeze that top button a couple of times, now it's not gonna go anywhere and it's nice and tight. Couple the other way. Now I can move it, put it whatever angle I want, tighten it back up again. A couple things. I was talking with Larry from Platyball Platypod and I asked, is this air? Is it some kind of compression system? It is not. These buttons are mechanical. And the reason is interesting. One, I think it's probably more accurate on a predictable level. But more importantly, what Larry said to me was you can feel the tension when it's mechanical as opposed to just air. You can actually feel as these buttons get tighter, which is really, really nice. Now I'm going to take the ball head off because actually, you know what? I'll leave it on, not the ball head, but the uh, camera. I'm going to leave it on for a second. Let me flatten it out. A couple things I want to point out. This right here, this big wheel, this is for the panning head. So I can lock it and it won't turn. But if I turn this towards me, I now have a completely smooth pan. And by the way, this is super smooth. I was actually kind of surprised how smooth this was. Here's where this gets really, really good though. With my uh, Acrotec ball head, 
this ball piece is on the top, right? The platyball kind of turns all that upside down. This is on the top. And why that matters is I need my tripod level or I need the base of the ball head to be level. In this case, I don't. This tripod could be completely, weirdly off level and I can still, I'll just do this and you'll see the point, I can still loosen it a couple, level it how I need it, and tighten it, and still shoot because the main camera part is good, and then loosen my panning wheel and get a nice smooth pan out of it. Um, that's pretty much it for the Ergo. One quick note on the difference before I go over to the Elite on the, the Ergo and the Elite. The Elite has a built-in level. So if you are doing what I just described and you need to get your camera level, you're either gonna have a separate bubble that you use, and it does come with one, I believe, a little plate that you can put in here to level it. Or my camera has a level on the back. So I can use the built-in level in the camera if your camera has that. So let's, let's jump over to the Elite and take a look at the one main difference that makes me want that one. Actually, there's two because I love the red, which you can see from here. This one's more of a gray. Again, to release this camera, all you got to do is find the little safety switch, which is under my thumb right now. And you can now see the little knot, hopefully, here that you turn. Push that safety switch in, turn this, and the camera's out. It's amazingly simple. I got to be honest, I can't believe somebody didn't think about some of this earlier. So let's jump over to this one, see what we think of the Elite. All the same features I just discussed exist. Lower button loosens it. You can even do vertical shots if you want to. Top button, a couple of squeezes, and it gets super tight and you can feel the tension. This wheel tightens the panning head or loosens the panning head so that you can pan. Here's the safety button. It's easier to see without the camera on. And here's this little thumb notch I was talking about, which makes it easy to put the camera in. I'll use the other hand so you can see. Push the button, use that little notch on this side to turn it, and listen. Okay, now tighten it up and you can see. Here's the main difference. I've got the panning head loose, I can tighten it, but here's the main difference. Right here is the power switch. There's a couple buttons that do different things here. And the battery compartment is actually down here. That's where the battery goes. And it's just like a little small, you know, cylindric battery. It's not a button battery. If I turn this on, you'll see all the controls light up. I'll try and shade it so that you can see it better. And then you get that level. And the level is basically four arrows. So when I get this thing level, you can see it start getting there right now. And when you get four arrows, you've got it where you need it. Right there. And then you just tighten it. And you're good to go. That, to me, worth the price of admission. I love that. I don't have to worry about changing the view on the back of my camera, looking at the screen on the back of the camera. I'll be honest, I always have trouble leveling the camera level. Um, this thing is awesome. Once you've got this thing level, again, I'm trying to save their product here. I'll just put it in my pocket. Once you get it level, you can loosen this little wheel and get a nice, smooth pano. So what do you say we do some shooting? Here we go. So one of the things I wanted to try with the Platyballs, this one being the Elite, the Ergo sitting over here, is I wanted to try different lenses, different sizes, different weights, different lengths to see how it handles the, the balance and the weight. For example, earlier I was using the Arca Swiss plate on the bottom of my 5D Mark IV. Now I've got a really right stuff plate on the foot of my Sigma 150 to 600. When this thing is extended at 600, it sticks out pretty far. A lot of it is the hood, but you, you, you get the point, right? So let's do some shooting with this thing and see what we think. Wow locks in really well so far. Let's loosen that up a little bit. Loosen the pan wheel. Now I can fully move it this way. I can fully move it this way and see how it holds. Perfect for shooting the moon or something.
Well, you've seen the unboxing and you've seen them out in the field. And now let's talk about the Ergo and the Elite Platyball. And first of all, let me start with this. To those of you over at Platypod slash Platyball, Dr. T, uh, thank you so much for sending these to me to play with a little bit. They are pre-release versions, everybody, so just be aware of that. But I want to share kind of my thoughts after using them for a, a number of weeks or possibly even a couple of months at this point. First of all, again, I want to state, I am not a big ball head user. I have a nice ball head. I have an Acrotec ball head. And I have a couple of different tripods, travel tripods, big tripods. There are times everybody needs them. But my main shooting experience is live music, and we can't take a tripod into a photo pit at a concert. That said, I have a couple of opinions on this. First of all, the turning it upside down thing to me is brilliant. I love the fact that the ball is on the bottom. I don't know why. It just feels logical to me. It makes sense to me. And the two, two buttons instead of knobs, that makes it one-handed. And for somebody like me, that's invaluable. I always hated, for example, when I wanted to, uh, you know, move my camera around that I had to use two hands because if I loosened a knob, the camera would drop, right? Well, now I can just hold the ball head, squeeze those buttons, position it how I need it, and doing it one-handed is very, very nice. The other thing is I want to talk about quality because, again, I own a nice ball head. I know what a nice ball head is like, and not everything is made perfect day one, right? Not everything comes out of the gate, especially a new product that's pretty much a radical redesign like these from what we're used to being spot on. Uh, and, and by the way, if everything was perfect on day one, you wouldn't have version two or version three or new and improved and all those terms that we're used to. But what's interesting with the Platyball is it at least feels like to me we're already on version two, maybe even version three. Every product I review, I try and find something that I don't like, right? Because nothing is perfect, right? My think tank bag, when I reviewed it, it's missing pockets in places there should really be pockets. I've really racked my brain to try and figure out where I can say, you know, Platyball, I wish you guys would do this. I really can't find much other than the battery mistake that I had. And they had that labeled. I just didn't see it. So there's my fix, okay? I had the battery in wrong. It was upside down. I'm on the hill. I couldn't get the level to work because I had put the battery in and done it a million times. And I'm like, I know what I'm doing. I put the battery. Oh, I must have worn the battery out. And I thought the battery was dead. I didn't even check. That's how stupid I am. Came all the way back down the hill angry, planning on buying a new battery and realized I had the battery in upside down. And I talked to Dr. T about it and Larry at, at Platypod and he goes, Steve, there's a plus marking on the cover that you put the battery on. I'm like, oh, I should have looked at that. Okay. So that's my gripe is I kind of wish that that was like flashing and bold and changed languages and all of that type stuff. So I knew positive goes down on the battery. Other than that, these are really nice to me. I like them. I like how firm they get. I like that you can feel the grip on the buttons. And I'd be interesting, interested to know what you think of them. If you pre-ordered one of these on one of the crowdsourced campaigns that they did, when you end up getting it, please leave a comment down what you think of the Platyball. Again, you can find out more information at platypod.com or platyball.com and Larry Becker's videos. If you want to see kind of how they work in detail before you get one, go check those out. Those are at platyball.com as well. I'm Steve Brazel. This is Behind the Shot. Make sure you check out each and every regular show. You can subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts. And wherever you get your podcasts, if your podcast source supports video, the show is available in audio only or a video version. And if you don't have an app that supports video, you can always get them on YouTube as well here at Behind the Shot. All the show notes and everything you need to know about the show is at behindtheshot.tv. We will see you on the next show. 